So this is my ASIR Plus. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This is chapter 16 of my complete video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer. Chapter 16, Entry Level Astrophotography, Part 4, Deep Sky Imaging with the ASI Air and an unsupported digital camera. In chapter 16, Part 3, I went over the equipment you would need for deep sky imaging and I demonstrated how to get started using some entry level equipment using a digital camera. And in that video I did not use my ASI Air for a number of reasons. As you all know I only use Sony cameras and ASI Air is not compatible with Sony cameras. But one of the viewers, Greg, encouraged me to keep trying to use the ASI Air and get it working, which I never could previously because you have to use ZWO cameras. So uh, with some trial and error, I finally was able to get it to work with my Sony camera using a workaround that involved buying another ZWO camera, which annoyed me, but I did get it working. So I'm going to take some more deep sky images using my Sony camera and the ASI Air, even though it's not compatible. And with this demonstration, I'm going to use my Lasmandi GM8 mount. In the earlier video, I used a Sirius EQG mount, and that mount does not have a USB port on the mount. So to connect that mount to your computer or the ASI Air, you have to have an EQ mod cable which I didn't have at the time, I have bought one now, but this Lasmandi mount does have a USB port on it, so you just use a USB-A to USB-B cable to connect the mount to the ASI Air or a laptop if you want to. That is the same cable that is a printer cable, and so that is much more convenient because I have some printer cables and they're cheap and you can easily obtain those cables. And so I can connect this mount to my ASI Air. So let's put it together. This mount, you have to screw the mount onto the tripod legs with these screws and a hex wrench. So I will do that and then I will put the telescope on and then we'll go over how I've got the ASI Air work to work with my Sony camera. And for this demonstration, I'm going to be using my StellarView 102 millimeter apochromatic refractor, which is a little bit bigger than what I recommended. But this refractor is really good for astrophotography. Uh, it's high quality apochromatic refractor. And another thing I like about it is that it came with two brackets. So I can permanently leave my red dot finder attached to one bracket and the guide scope attached to the other bracket. After part three, one of the viewers asked me if I still had this Lasmandi GM8 mount. I guess he was asking me that because I didn't mention it as one of the recommended pieces of equipment when I went over the equipment when I discussed the mounts. And the reason I didn't mention this Lasmandi is that this Lasmandi mount, I would consider it a higher level than the other ones I mentioned, which were kind of entry level, the AVX and the Sirius EQG mounts, and even the EQ6R Pro made by Skywatcher. Um, I think this is a higher level mount. It costs a thousand dollars more than the first two mounts. This one is $2,400. Why does it cost a thousand dollars more? Because it's a thousand times better than those other mounts. This mount has a 50 pound payload, so you can even go bigger than this 102 millimeter refractor, but you shouldn't. To start out, you should go, like I said, with something small. 60 millimeter, 80 millimeter, 102 millimeter is about as far as you should go when you're first starting out. And this mount can easily handle something bigger if you 
you know, upgrade after you get started in astrophotography and want to go bigger. And also it is a precision mount. It is highly, highly accurate mount. And like I mentioned, it has a USB port on it and that's very convenient. So for those reasons, this is worth the extra money, but maybe when you're starting out, you don't want to spend that much uh, on a mount that is really you know, aimed at astrophotography. You don't need to be that accurate for visual viewing, but this is an excellent mount and I highly recommend it, but maybe it's not really appropriate for a beginner. Um, unless you have a lot of extra money and you plan to upgrade at some point in the future, and, and yeah, definitely get this mount. So I've got my uh, telescope on the mount and the cables are already attached to the guide scope and to the camera. And this is a decoy camera. I am putting it here because I need this to get the ASI air to work. Uh, for the guide scope, I'm using an ASI 290mm Mini with an Orion 50mm guide scope. And for my decoy camera, I had to buy this ZWO ASI 120MC camera. It is a color camera and it is a um, planetary imaging camera, so I could use it. Uh, uh, but for my for this demonstration it is my decoy camera to get everything lined up and the plate solving to work so I'll go over that in just a minute when I go get my ASI air and it, you have to have power for it so you have to plug this into a power source and since I'm going to be in the middle of nowhere I'm going to take my little uh, Orion lithium ion battery and use that for the power source for this ASI air. Also, before you leave your house, when you have internet service, be sure to go to the app store and download the ASI air app on your phone because we're going to be using our phone to operate the ASI air instead of a laptop, which is great because laptop takes a lot of energy and it also um, doesn't work well when it's cold, but neither does the phone. <laughs> when it's very cold, I keep it in my pocket, and the minute I pull it out of my pocket, it dies, but at least it's better than a laptop, which is one advantage of the ASI Air over using your laptop. So download the ASI Air app, and then before you get started, you go into your phone settings, and you go to Wi-Fi and you connect to the ASI Air Wi-Fi. Then once you've done that, you go to the app and where it says enter device, you hit that and then it'll bring up the settings that you need to put in. But first we have to plug it in and turn it on. So you plug in the power source, you plug the USB a to USB B into one of these ports and the other end into the mount and then you take the USB A to USB C cables and the main camera should go into the USB port that's blue those are USB 3 so the main camera goes into one of those and then you can put the guide camera into the other one and then your mount can go into one of the USB 2 ports and I have a thumb drive in there if I were going to use this camera and I'm not I, I would uh, put the images on this thumb drive because otherwise it saves them to the ASIR device and then you have to take the device in and download them from there but it's not that complicated, but uh, I, I, I'm not going to use it anyway. So that's how you plug it in. And then you plug this in to the mount and to that port. And then you turn it on. I, I always just put it on the ground because my cables are really long. <laughs> but make sure they don't snag. 
And of course, you need a power source for your mount as well. So plug that in and then turn your mount on. And then once you've gone into the ASI Air Wi-Fi, then you go to the app and you enter. And then it will have some pictures of a camera and a guide scope and a mount. Go to the mount and you put in the mount. This is a Lasmandi Gemini. Enter that and then turn it on by pushing this green button and then go. it'll auto detect the main camera and the guide camera because they're ZWO cameras and it, they're proprietary so they already have the drivers in the ASI Air. Unlike with your laptop you have to download the drivers. So then you go to your main camera and it's auto detected that I'm using the 120 MC and it'll ask you the focal length of your guide scope uh, of your telescope excuse me and if you don't know you can put zero and once it turns on it'll it'll detect how the focal length and then for your guide scope, you go to the guide button and you it auto detected that I'm using the 290mm mini and it asks you the focal length of your guide scope. And the focal length of this guide scope is 162 millimeters. So I type that in and then turn the green button to turn the guide scope on as well. Then once everything is on, you want to focus your main camera and your guide camera. And so Go to a bright star and put your Botanoff mask on your telescope. And first, you want to focus your main camera. And mark down these numbers where that focal point is so you don't have to keep doing it. And then you just go back to that mark and you'll be in focus, or you should be. But you can go to a, a bright star and use your Botanoff mask and once you have your main camera focused, turn it off and tell ASI Air that your guide camera is your main camera so that you can focus your guide camera. And it doesn't have to be as precisely focused as your main camera, but it needs to be somewhat focused so it can detect the stars because it's going to pick multiple stars to lock on to to use for guiding. So once you uh, have that focus, you use this helical focuser on this one and you may have to move this in and out a little bit to get it in focus then make go back and make it the guide scope and make this your main scope and once you're in focus go back to the home position and you, you need to be roughly polar aligned at this point you need to have looked through your polar scope and you have Polaris in there and then you can get the ASI Air to help you polar align. So we can't do that right now because you uh, can't see any stars because the sun's out. So when it gets dark, we'll uh, start again and we'll polar align. And then I'll show you how I use this camera as a decoy and switch it out for my Sony camera and take the pictures with my Sony camera and still use the ASI Air to auto guide. I I cannot use it to uh, save the pictures because it, it thinks it's taking pictures with this, um, but that's okay. I, it does all the other things, plate solving, center the object, help me polar line, although I don't need help, and that's all I really need it to do. And then I can just set the phone down. The, the downside is that you, you can't use your phone for anything else after that. Uh, but we'll get to all that when it gets dark and we get started with polar aligning and taking deep sky images with an unsupported camera and ASI Air Plus. I'll be back soon. Alrighty, I have everything set up and I have Polaris in the polar scope and I have the decoy camera still on here, this ZWO camera. And so I'm going to take that out and put in my Sony camera and balance it with my Sony camera on it because the decoy is only for the plate solving, polar alignment and uh, centering and the actual pictures will be taken with my Sony camera.
ZWO decoy camera back on there. Let's turn everything on, the power to the mount. And uh, on this mount, I told you it's a mega amount of cables. We're gonna go with a cold start, and <laughs> means I have to take my glove off, and it's gonna beep. As soon as it beeps, I'll set it as the Wi-Fi on my phone. <sighs> Once it's set as the Wi-Fi, I'm gonna go to the ASI Air app, and it says Enter Device. We're gonna hit that, and then. I, I've already used it, so it already says Lasmandi Gemini mount. The focal length of this telescope is 712 millimeters, and the focal length of the guide scope is 162 millimeters. And it already detected the decoy camera, main camera, the ZWO120MC, and my guide camera, the one. Uh, 290 mm mini and I don't have any of the other things filter wheel or any of that crap so just hit enter you have these buttons and the one is in yellow you can hit it to have other choices it's on preview and if you click that then you can choose focus because I need to refocus because I accidentally pushed the focuser in so you set the exposure to a couple of seconds and then you hit this big white button and it'll start taking two second pictures and then you can focus. So I'll be right back. I have to go get my button off mask. Hey, okay, I have my button off mask on and it's a little out of focus. So um, let me focus that and I'll be back. Okay, that looks really well focused. Now I have to turn that camera off and tell it that the guide camera is the main camera and focus it. Okay, now I'm back in the home position and I'm gonna hit that same yellow button that says focus and go to PA, which stands for polar alignment. And uh, uh, you have to point at two Polaris and everything has to be connected. And then you hit this arrow button. It will start taking a picture and plate solving. It will auto rotate to the RA axis, at least it says it will, 60 degrees to calculate the accuracy. Uh, okay. Uh, it said it would rotate. Uh, uh, I don't know why it's not rotating. One second, please. Okay, here's why I hate this thing. Um, <laughs> it did plate solve a minute ago, but when I tried to polar align, now it's saying no internet connection on the ASI Air Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna have to turn my phone off. I could have polar aligned myself a long time ago, but um, just for this demonstration, I'm gonna turn it off and back on. I'll be right back. I turned it off and turned it back on, and now it has the Wi-Fi connection again. And I went to Capella and it went straight to it and plate solved. So then I went back to polar alignment and I don't know why it won't. It's supposed to rotate the mount 60 degrees during the polar alignment. I, I, I'm sure my polar alignment was fine. So I, I'm just gonna skip the polar alignment because it's taking too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and and um, skip that and go to that same button. It says PA and that yellow button. And then I'm going to um, go to preview. Let's go to my target, which is NGC 281 in Capella. I mean, <laughs> in Cassiopeia. Now, here's the bad thing about my little workaround. I'm gonna get the ASI Air to get on my target. 
with this ZWO camera and when it's on the target I will take it off and put my Sony camera on and take my pictures so I can't use the auto run function that's um, disappointing item number one disappointing item number two is that that is in Cassiopeia and it's going to cross the meridian which means it will need to do a meridian flip and I can't set it to do an automatic meridian flip because it, it, it doesn't the camera's just going to be sitting right here taking pictures of nothing so it's not going to know where it is so I have to just pay attention to it and then uh, stop taking pictures and meridian flip myself and then resume picture taking so it's not a uh, 100% great workaround, but uh, at least I can take advantage of the plate solving function. And I don't know why the polar alignment didn't thing didn't work. I'm gonna switch out my camera now and get it set up with my intervalometer to take some pictures. Alrighty, I'm on my target. Time for the trickaroo. I'm gonna take out this ZWO camera. <sighs> nice thing is this camera goes into the diagonal so I can just take out the whole diagonal just put a cap on it and set it here and then put my Sony camera in set up my intervalometer did I mention it's 34 degrees <laughs> Alrighty, I've got my intervalometer all set up. We'll just drape it right here. And I've got the ZWO camera just sitting here doing nothing really. Now I need to set up the auto guider. You hit this graph. You tap. And then you hit these two circles. And then you hit this uh, crosshair button and it'll start taking pictures with the guide scope. This is what it looks like when it's calibrating. It goes through west step and then east and then north and south and then it gets rid of any backlash and when it's done all that then it will start guiding and we'll see the two lines on that graph and then I'll we'll start taking my pictures. I'm not complaining about the temperature because <laughs> in dark skies Montana right now it's negative seven and that's Fahrenheit so 35 is actually really nice and today during the day it was 71. <laughs> it's auto guiding now so like I said, you can't touch anything, except I have to come back when it gets close to the meridian. The meridian is the imaginary line that runs from north to south. And Cassiopeia is circumpolar, which means that it rotates closely around the north celestial pole. And so it has to cross the meridian, unless I just only take a couple of pictures, which I might. Um, and then uh, uh, when it gets close, I had to stop taking pictures and meridian flip and then resume. Uh, and then uh, I'll come back in a minute. Uh, I'll, I mean, not a minute. I'll come back in a couple of hours while I go look at Jupiter because <laughs> I think there's a shadow transit right now and some other stuff. I'll be back. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to take pictures of Andromeda Galaxy because... That way, I don't have to worry about the meridian flip. So, I'm going to uh, get it on Andromeda Galaxy and get the auto guiding going again. But same thing, I have to trick it and take out the ZWO120MC camera and then put in my Sony camera and set up the intervalometer. I'm going to take eight eight-minute pictures and one 30-second picture to mix in to preserve the bright core and 
um, then I'll have to make any meridian flip so I can just let it go and then go enjoy Jupiter and other deep sky objects with my other telescope. So I'll be back when it's done taking all those pictures and then um, pack everything up. So I'll be back soon. I had major issues since I left. <laughs> I wasn't past the meridian, so I had the meridian flip after all, which meant I had to take off my Sony camera and put back on the Trickster camera, and then recenter, and then, of course, I had to redo the, the guiding, recalibrate, and so all of that's taken a very long time, and my microphone died, so this probably doesn't sound very good. But I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I got my eight eight minute exposures and one 30 second exposure for the core. And I'm done with my pictures. I had a fantastic time. The clouds parted and I looked at Jupiter. It was just beautiful and saw a meteor and some Messier objects and some neat stuff. And it was fun, fun, fun. And now it's time to pack everything up and take it back home and process my photos. So I'll be back to show you my results of my trickster method of using my Sony mirrorless camera with the ASI Air for astrophotography. Well, that's it for chapter 16. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, 